Hi, MCHS Volleyball team. I just wanna say thank you so much for having this fundraiser for Sierra's House. It means so much to us and all of the support we've gotten from our community has been outstanding. My cousin, Alyssa Gagel, messaged me and asked if I would tell you a little bit about my backstory and what you're playing for and what we hope to do with Sierra's House. So I'll start off by introducing myself. My name is Sierra Fusan. I am a Murray State student. I will be graduating from Murray State uh, this December with my bachelor's degree in public relations. But I was once a Meade County High School student like yourselves. When I was in high school though, I had a really big secret. And that secret was that I was being abused at home. And my abuser was someone that I loved and cared about very much. Uh, my mother, Tammy Benham. She had a lot of medical issues growing up and ended up becoming addicted to prescription opioids and painkillers. Um, once my parents got divorced in 2012, she um, started drinking and became addicted to alcohol as well. The combination of these two things really made her into a different person. And so every day when I was at school, I would kind of, you know, try to act normal. I didn't want anyone to know. And the reason I was keeping this a secret was because I didn't want anyone to take me away from my mom. I cared about her so much and I wanted her to change. I also didn't want anyone to view my mom differently because I knew in my heart the person that she was and I didn't want them to think of her as just an addict because she was a person. Um, my hope was always that she was going to change and recover and I have a lot of memories um, crying on her kitchen floor, just begging her to stop or to get some help. But um, unfortunately that did not happen. And my senior year at MCHS, which was 2018, my mom passed away from liver failure from the combination of alcohol and opioids. It was very fast, it was very sudden, and I was only 17 at the time. When this happened, I had no intentions of making an impact. All I knew is that I was hurting and I wanted to break this cycle of addiction because my mom came from generations of addicts. Of course, I wanted to help and make a difference somehow, but at the time I was just processing the trauma. Um, in December of 2018, I had started going to religious ed at St. John the Apostle with my then boyfriend, now husband, Nicholas. Um, and when my mom died, I really felt like I had two choices. I could either run away from God and ask, why is this happening to me? Or I could fall back and cast my anxieties onto him as um, the word tells us to do. And I feel so grateful and happy that I chose to continue in the path of God. So the next week after my mom had passed away and we had done all the funeral proceedings, I went back to St. John youth group, our senior group, and they had planned a trip to the Meade County Detention Center. And I really didn't think much about this trip. I had no expectations. I think all of us in the group were a little nervous because we had never been inside a correctional facility. We didn't know what it was gonna be like to be with these incarcerated women. So we were going to see the women's group who had a um, weekly religious group with um, Debbie Thompson, who you'll hear about more in, in this story. So we all kind of went in there as this group and we sat facing the um, incarcerated women and none of us who were seniors knew what to say at all. We were just like, where do we begin this conversation? So um, we let the women who were incarcerated speak. And as they started speaking and telling their stories of how they ended up here, I noticed a very um, 
similar and relatable theme and that was substance abuse. Um, most of these women were struggling with substance abuse and in that moment I felt this pull which I really think was God um, telling me to um, open myself up to this experience and tell them my experience with substance, substance abuse as the child of an addict. Um, a lot of these women were mothers who no longer had their kids um, or couldn't see them or hadn't talked to them. And so I raised my hand and I told them that a week before I had lost my mom to substance abuse. And that really opened a door that I'm so happy has remained open. This um, bond was formed almost immediately between me and these women because they were able to give my mom a voice again and tell me that addicts love their children, that they want to stop, that they um, truly wish that they could change, um, and that they told me that my mom loved me no matter what choices that she made. And I was able to tell them um, that their children do love them and that there is still time to change. And I told them that although being in jail seems horrible, I wish my mom had had some type of intervention point where she didn't have access to um, the substances that she was abusing. And so after that experience, which was very emotional, I talked to the director of the um, jail ministries there through St. John's, which was Debbie Thompson. And I decided to go back um, just with her and went on Fridays to visit the women in jail and got to know them more, got to sit down and eat with them and talk to them just about addiction and how many people it affects not just the addict but their children and their families and their lives and their opportunities um after one of these visits debbie thompson said to me that her goal was to open a halfway house which a halfway house is a place for previously incarcerated people to go when they are released from jail or prison. They go there to stay and kind of try to get back into society. Um, you want to set them up for success so they don't go back to the people and the places that enable their addictions or their bad behaviors. So she said that that was her goal. I thought that was wonderful. And she told me that if she was ever able to make that goal happen, she wanted it to be named Sierra's house. I was honored. I was taken aback, but I also just thought of it, you know, as a broad concept until um, this past February in um, 2021, she messaged me and said, hey, would you be okay with us actually naming it Sierra's house? And I was like, of course. And um, in August, we got to actually open the house in Brandenburg, my hometown. Um, and we have applicants who, um, once they are released, will get to stay in the house. And there we will help teach them life skills and hopefully get them jobs so they can become their own independent people and succeed in society and hopefully, you know, break those patterns, those addictions that um, have affected them so deeply. So that's kind of our mission. We're doing it through a um, scope of faith, of course. And I hope that this message helps you understand a little what you are playing for and also that you know you never really know what's going on in someone's life we all know someone or at least know someone who knows someone who has struggled with substance abuse or has maybe even lost their lives to substance abuse and it's time for those stories to um 
come out of the darkness so we can start helping each other and making me county and our community the best place that it can be. Thank you all so much.